Hello everybody, and in today's video, it's going to be all about color theory, or at least an introduction to color theory. Things I've learned, things I find to be useful, and I hope you enjoy. Please let me know if you have any questions. So, color theory. What is color theory? So, I'm defining color theory as it's the study of how colors interact with each other and how they can be combined to create different visual effects. In the context of painting Warhammer miniatures, color theory can help you understand how to choose and use colors effectively to create a visually appealing and harmonious model. So it's basically just, you know, how do I make my models look better or, or pick interesting paint schemes that'll do what I want them to do, whether, whether I want them to look really flashy or really subtle or convey like a mood or a story or a narrative of a character. You know, this will kind of help you give you more tools in your in your kind of toolbox to go about that. All right. So the first aspect of color I think is most important is value. Uh, value is just essentially how light or dark a color is. So on a scale between, you know, total black and 100% white, how light or dark is your color? And you see, uh, I've grayscaled uh, these pictures, but you can see that they still work. You can still you can still tell what the the subject matter is, even though it's in grayscale. And that's because no one is uh, no one is value blind. People may be color blind, but no one is value blind. So even if like you can't detect color or chroma, you can still detect value if you if you can see. So the core way a paint scheme works in my opinion is if the values work and then colors kind of you know modify or augment the value scheme and uh, I think you'll also notice with a little observation that colors or various pigments or highest saturation colors like yellow pure yellow red blue indigo uh, purple they, they live on they live on values meaning that if you want a really saturated yellow, it has to be on, it's a fairly light color. Like if I were to turn the the value down for yellow, like you wouldn't, like you wouldn't get the same yellow. This looks like more of a mustardy, kind of not so nice looking color. And you know, if I turn it up, it, it, it doesn't, it gives you more of like a cream color. But if you want a truly saturated yellow, it has to be like on that value. And it's the same thing with, uh, with blue. And, you know, it, it's a fairly, uh, it's a darker kind of color. So if I, if I turn the value all the way up, you know, you don't, you don't get the saturated blue. So in other words, if I were to like color this by glazing over it, if I wanted to achieve a yellow color, I couldn't glaze over like this really dark area and get a yellow color. So I'll attempt to do that now. So if I attempt to glaze over this uh, dark area, it doesn't really look yellow. But if I attempt to glaze over this really, you know, light area, it does look yellow. And again, over the dark area, you know, it doesn't look yellow because colors live on different values. So I think that's the point. I hope that came across. Okay, so the second aspect of color I think is important is hue. Hue is essentially the where, you know, your pigment lives on the color wheel. Red to violet, uh, hue just, you know, represents, you know, the category of color that you have. So another way of thinking about this color wheel or the spectrum of color is Roigbiv. In other words, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And that basically starts about right here. And then it goes red, orange, yellow, green, uh, blue, indigo, violet. And that gives you the whole spectrum. So if you were to take one of these colors, that would be your hue. That's the second aspect of color. And then the third aspect of color I think is most important is saturation or chroma. In other words, this refers to the intensity or purity of a color. Highly saturated colors are bright and vivid, while desaturated colors are more muted and kind of more like gray. And a thing to note about 
you know, saturation and just uh, colors in general is that most people refer to, you know, things like, let's say, like this, uh, this satchel. Like most people would say this is a brown. You know, in reality, if you're thinking in terms of, you know, pigments, it's technically more of a red, right? It's just a very desaturated uh, low value red going back to the previous elements of color and it's like my art teacher used to say you know brown was basically a bad word because you know it's just like either like a tint tone or shade of red or orange or yellow and uh, you know going back to some more vocabulary so a tint of a color is essentially when you add white or a light color to paint and a tone is when you add gray to the paint and a shade is when you add black or a dark color to the paint. So, for instance, if we look at this skin here, we can see that, you know, most people would think of this as like a flesh tone. And then if they wanted to paint that, they would try to reach for like a flesh colored paint. And you can do that. That's very simple. But, you know, if you had orange and white, you know, you could essentially mix those colors together and get uh, a tint of orange that is effectively a skin tone. You can see this armor here is basically, it's a, it's a tone of, of blue, basically. So, you know, the more you know about color theory and pigments, you know, the fewer specific colors you need. You can mix more colors or you can modify more colors with more confidence because you know, kind of, you know what's under the hood of the pigments and the science of uh, color. So these have been the the three aspects of color I think are the most important, they're the most foundational aspects of color. So when you look at an image, you know, you can see, you know, the value scale works, the you can identify the 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 hue and you can identify, you know, the saturation. And so with this in mind, we can mix colors. So essentially with red, blue, yellow, black, and white, most other colors can be made. Um, I don't know if you can make every color super easily, but I think you can make most colors. So this is a rock I painted with like five really cheap craft paints, just red, blue, yellow, and black and white. And I just mixed the colors and then I was able to get all these skin tones and, uh, you know, size studio lighting on the side and specular highlights and the hat and everything. So not, I'm not suggesting that you go about trying to mix all of your colors, but I think it's just good to know. And I think it'll make you a better painter to know how to mix colors and, you know, what colors are comprised of and the elements of color. So if you look at any company that makes miniature paints and they have some crazy name, you know, you can just look at what the color is and you can see, oh, well, that's just, uh, that's just like a, a jade, a dark jade color, or that's a, a mauve color, or that's a, that's an azure color. And if I don't have that, I can just mix it from, you know, maybe take like a little bit of blue or mix a little bit of green with it. And then, you know, you're off to the races. You don't have to be beholden to just a set of pre-made colors that are, can be very expensive. So. All right, so next on the list of uh, things to learn about color is color temperature. So, you know, I've divided the color wheel into uh, a warm spectrum and a cool spectrum. So you know, you'll, you will probably have heard the term like that's, those are warm colors or those are cool colors. And these terms are, are such because the colors come with various psychological associations. So colors like red, orange, yellow, uh, you know, we typically associate them with warmth or fire or uh, passion or anger. And that's represented in, you know, the way models are often painted. So angry models are usually painted red or, you know, red things look more intense or angrier or just more passionate. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, you know, blue, can evoke feelings of calmness, tranquility, uh, sadness in a certain context. 
can also be seen as very kind of like noble or regal or stable or kind of mysterious. And you'll notice that factions or models that embody these characteristics are often painted in colors that convey what they are, so to speak. So it's a whole psychology of color. I'm just going to go over the basics here, but uh, I might talk about that a little bit more later. All right. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about was mainly like white and black in regards to like color temperature. So white, gray, and black could be considered kind of neutral, but uh, it's very easy to, you know, to mix different colors to get different effects with them. So as you can see here, this white robe has been shaded with a, with a blue kind of a desaturated blue color. So it gives the whole it gives the robes a very uh, a very cool look a very uh, you know it's on the cooler side of the color spectrum whereas on the other side you know this armor has been shaded with more of a warmer color so there's not just one way to highlight and shade like white or black you can use you know almost any color that's lighter or darker to achieve different effects so here on this armor, it's been highlighted with uh, a very desaturated blue, kind of a, a, a cyan, a light cyan, very desaturated. And that gives it kind of more of a cool uh, appearance. Whereas these boots are also black, but they've been highlighted with a warmer kind of brownish gray color. So that gives it more of a warm kind of a feel to it. And so, you know, you can make the choice as to whether you want to highlight or shade with a you know, warm color or cool color and then that can play into the feeling you're trying to evoke with the model so it's like with this gray knight he's been shaded with blue and that gives it more of a, a mysterious kind of magical uh, effect which I think is very interesting and makes it look really nice I think the the key point here is that there's not just one way to uh, highlight or shade white or black and that they can be kind of a you know, they can work towards making your model more cool or more worn, depending on how you want to highlight it or shade it. Okay. All right, next I'm going to talk about various kind of color schemes and how they relate to different ways of thinking about the color wheel. So the first one is monochromatic, essentially meaning single color. So I think this chapter is called the Castellans of the Rift, and it's essentially... Uh, more of a yellowish kind of green that's very desaturated and then the trim is also green and then uh, the shoulder pad is also green but a lighter green and it just it's just tints tones and shades of a single color the same thing with this Lenish uh, demon so as we can see this area is it's kind of a lighter violet. This area is darker violet. This area is kind of a mid-tone violet or magenta. So it's all in like in the violet area, but just tints, tones, and shades of that. So, you know, you might pick this style of painting if you want the model to appear very harmonious. Like every everything is kind of related. It's very close on the color wheel, so it's very harmonious it's very gentle to look at i guess you could say okay next up analogous color schemes so analogous color schemes are when you pick colors that are close to each other on the color wheel not just tints tones and shades of one color but colors that are uh, kind of neighbors on the color wheel so for instance yellow and a scarlet kind of red or this uh, teal very light teal with this darker blue so they're they're very close on the color wheel. So they're they're uh, very harmonious as well. Maybe not as much as uh, monochromatic, but still uh, very harmonious. But also a bit more visual interest, while still feeling related. All right, complementary colors. So complementary colors exist on opposite spectrums of the color wheel. For instance, uh, the Stark Angel is a dark green, and his uh, the casing of his gun is uh, a scarlet red. So 
this red is you know directly opposite of green on the color wheel so it acts as a complement and adds a nice visual interest or pop and it really stands out and it it creates visual interest meaning it creates contrast it's interesting to look at same thing with these orcs uh, green skin uh, red armor and red insignias and these ultramarines blue armor and a gold uh, insignias but the gold could be you know it's kind of an orangish color and orange would be the complement of blue so it's kind of a you know a subtle way of adding a complement to uh, a color scheme through metallics okay and next up is triadic so triadic is when you have uh, your major colors are on are on three different portions of the color wheel equally divided so we can see that here with these ultramarines blue armor yellow wings and uh, trim on their shoulder pads and red gun casings so this is getting more and more uh, contrast and visual interest but this strikes me as a little a little kind of cartoonish and a bit garish but this is also a, kind of achieving a similar effect but it's far more subtle because it's not as saturated so here we can see uh, a somewhat desaturated kind of cyan bluish color and gold which is more of an orangish yellow and a red so it's red yellow and blue but just less saturated than right here and with the Bretonians, you know we can see that right here with the uh, blue yellow red I'd say this is probably uh, a bit harder to pull off and make it look uh, harmonious all right so the whole point of learning this is to you know create visual interest or contrast on your miniature so on one end of the spectrum if you have no visual interest or no contrast you have just like a plain color it's boring but then on the opposite end of the spectrum you have visual chaos and then in the center ideally you want to have a balance between harmony and visual interest so you have uh, complementary colors and you have a variety of colors and shades and values and you know everything kind of stands out but there's also kind of a focal point that's kind of the main thing you want to stand out and you know a focal point can be made by using color or value or or hue and this is an example of that by you know having the lightest value on the armor be on the face which is generally the focal point anyways and also having a red for the eyes and that's creating or that's helping to create a focal point at at the face so uh, this has just been an introduction to color theory I hope you found this useful I know this is kind of a a complex topic and there's more I could talk about but I thought this would be a nice little intro to learn some vocabulary and if you have any questions let me know thanks for watching if you like my content please like and subscribe thank you and have a great day bye bye